you know, we had talked about uh, snitches and so forth, uh, you know, over our various interviews. Are you familiar with the whole Takashi 6 9 situation? A little bit. Yeah. He was a, a rapper in New York. He got affiliated with a bunch of bloods. And then when everyone got busted, he took the stand and told on everyone. Mm-hmm. He ended up getting like time served and he got out. And now he you know, doesn't have the same rap career that he had before, but he has somewhat of a career. But a few months ago, he was at LA Fitness and uh, a group of Latin Kings went in and basically beat the shit out of him. Mm-hmm. on camera heard you heard yeah. about this yeah they're now being charged and, and so forth i mean i don't think it's a very serious charge because it's not like they they permanently injured him they just beat him up and put Assault. out a video yeah. they just assaulted him yeah um how often was that happening in the mafia world for someone who was cooperating or was there or were beatdowns not even a thing is it basically if this person's cooperating they have to die yeah you cooperate in that life you, you die there's no beating. There's no, yeah. No. Nope. It's part of the oath. Never to betray your brothers of the life. And if you do, you suffer the consequences. Are there ever exceptions in the situation? You know, I mean, because it gets very, you know, in the world of hip hop, it gets very murky of who's telling, who's not telling. Are you telling on yourself? Or are you telling on other people? Like, for example, I don't know if you're familiar with the whole Young Thug case, the whole YSL uh, RICO case that's heard, happening heard in Georgia, right? Yeah. Right. This is a state RICO. Yeah. Not a federal RICO. But a whole bunch of guys, it was like 20-something people got indicted. Everyone was sitting there with no bond for various charges, but all of them were RICO charges, essentially. Mm-hmm. Now, there's two big rappers that were in this crew. There was Young Thug, who was considered the leader of this whatever you want to call it, whether it's a musical company or a gang or however, you know, you want to paint it. There's other guy named Gunna, who's the the other popular rapper in there who wasn't really as involved. I mean, he wasn't, didn't seem like he was really involved in any of the crime stuff. He was really just a music guy, Mm -hmm. but he was around all the guys and everything was happening. Now, going through this case and, and doing a lot of interviews with lawyers and people familiar with the case and so forth, everyone pretty much agreed that this guy Gunna really had the weakest case against them. They didn't really catch him with anything. He was not criminally like tied to really anything. He was just there and they're sort of throwing him in the Rico case. Now, he was the first person to actually plead out. Mm-hmm. So when he took his plea deal, and this whole thing ended up getting put on camera and getting released. He admitted to the judge as part of his plea agreement that YSL is a criminal organization and he has seen members do things in furtherance, you know, do crimes in furtherance of the gang. And by saying that, he was let free. Mm-hmm. And this is where sort of the the murkiness comes in. Because when that came out, everyone's like, Gunner's a snitch. He admitted publicly in a court of law that this musical group is a criminal organization. He's seen people, you know, do things in furtherance of the crime. Now, his lawyer called me right away when we started putting this stuff out and was like, listen, this plea deal is not going to hurt anybody. That he admitted to what he admitted, but he will never, he's not going to take, you know, this can't be used in anyone else's case and he can't take the stand. If he takes the stand, he's going to plead the fifth because anything he says, there might be a, a federal case that might come in and he would end up, ended up, um, what's the, what's the word that I'm looking, uh, basically testifying against himself. So therefore with self-incrimination, he could take the fifth in any situation. So therefore he didn't really tell on anyone. When you look at situations like that, is that snitching or is that not snitching? In our life, would be considered snitching. Okay, so if he was a mafia guy, he he would have a hit on him. Yeah, he would. It would be considered. I mean, he'd have to clear that first in some way. He couldn't just go, and he'd probably be be told not to do that. Mm. I mean, because look, when you say he's given immunity or, or he would take the fifth. 
what if they give him immunity and say, all right, we're not going to prosecute you. You got to tell the truth. You already admitted to it. Now they put him on the stand. You have immunity. There's no reason not to tell the truth. And if you don't, we hold you in contempt. So he's, he's putting himself in a, in a problem there. So they probably can use that some way, somehow, you know, against the others. I mean, I understand, you know, his reasoning behind taking the plea that way, but that's, that's a slippery slope. Definitely. Look, in our case, the only time anybody was able to admit that the mafia even existed was during a commission trial huh. because they had so many tapes with guys talking about everything that they decided that their tact was going to be, we'll admit that there is a mafia, but that doesn't mean we're committing crimes. That was kind of the, and Persico had to do that because he became his own lawyer, hmm. you know? And so he had to say, okay, there's a mafia, but we didn't commit any of these crimes. <laughs> Didn't sit well. <laughs> Didn't sit well. No. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's... it's. Now remember, I'm not calling him a snitch, but I'm saying it could be conceived that way, perceived that way. And if anyone snitches, is there always a price on their head at that point, or is it depends on the situation? Listen, Greg Scarpa was giving information to the government for the FBI for 20 years. Mm-hmm. I find it hard to believe that Persigo didn't know about it. And maybe Greg was saying to him, now I don't know this for a fact, I'm just putting it together. Greg was saying to him, look, you know, I give them a little, they give us a little back, I get some information, this and that and that. Because throughout the history of our life, you can't say that no one's ever spoken to the local police or this and that and that. That's, That's nonsense. It's happened all along. But was that used to put people in trouble and put them in jail? That's a whole different thing. It's a whole different thing. So would Greg be considered a snitch? He lasted 20 years doing this, you know, 20 years. Now, Willie Boy Johnson, probably heard of him. He was Gotti's guy. When they found out about Willie Boy, which I was a little bit nervous about because I had money on the street with Willie. He was pretty close to me too. Um, He got killed because nobody knew what he was doing. Greg, I have a feeling that it was known that he was, at least by Persico, I believe. Hmm. I could be wrong. Nobody's told me that for a fact. It's just my own conclusion on that. 